Uh, radiokeratotomy was the operation that preceded LASIK. It, it really set the standard for refractive surgery. It was the first real refractive surgery done in the United States, and it was done in the United States in the, in the early 80s. Uh, this operation was invented by Dr. Slava Fyodorov in the Soviet Union, who was a very flamboyant doctor, who claimed he created this operation in the following way. He said he had a patient, who, um, a young man who wore glasses, who was in an automobile accident, and the glasses shattered, and the shards of the glass cut his eye. He went to the doctor who patched the eye, and the next day when he took the patch off, the patient said, well, gee, doctor, whatever you did to this eye, do it here, because now I can see well without my glasses. And, uh, of course, the, he made up that story. It's not a true story. But what radiokeratotomy was, was an operation where incisions were made into the cornea to weaken the cornea and allow the cornea to flatten. And this was really the first operation that was done for any refractive, in any mass way, for refractive surgery. Dr. Fyodorov, being tied in with the, uh, the uh, leadership of the Soviet Union at the time, was able to do this operation on 30 or 40,000 people in order to find out how it worked. And then many American surgeons, such as these two surgeons, both of whom were friends of mine, uh, went to the Soviet Union in the late 70s to study with Dr. Fyodorov, and he brought it back and brought it back to the United States. In radio, and most people understand, just as a sidelight, um, Dr. Fyodorov had like a, a circular moving table where his patients were on. Uh, and they moved to certain spots, and at each spot they would do a, a little part of the procedure. And this was featured on the 60 Minutes in the United States in the, in the 80s or early 90s, which to most regret of American patients who would, of course, never go into a situation where they were on a conveyor belt to have surgery, but this was how it was done in the, in the Soviet Union. But radiokeratotomy involved making incisions in the cornea. The incisions were not in the central part of the cornea, but in the peripheral part of the cornea. The incisions were, were to weaken the cornea, causing a compensatory flattening of the central cornea. The amount of flattening corresponded to the degree of nearsightedness. So by altering the length of the incision, the depth of the incision, the number of the incisions, you could titrate the procedure to someone's different prescription. A very crude way, certainly compared to what we do today, where we're treating exact prescriptions with laser vision correction. But in um, the, the premise was, was to weaken the cornea, that the incisions would weaken the cornea, causing the cornea to flatten. It was not a very accurate procedure. It had some long-term problems. Uh, and ultimately, it, it was replaced entirely by laser vision correction. But in the times when we had radiokeratotomy, it was the only thing that we had, and a lot of radiokeratotomy was done in the United States. So, at the same time that radiokeratotomy was evolving, and, and, and possibly earlier than radiokeratotomy was evolving, another way of looking at changing the curvature of the cornea was being developed in South America by Dr. Jose Barraker at his clinic in, in Bogota, Colombia. And Dr. Barraker actually did the first what we call lamellar refractive procedure, which is a predecessor of modern LASIK procedure in 1948. So that speaks to how long we've been doing this kind of technologies, and this didn't happen overnight that we woke up and started doing LASIK. And lamellar surgery has to do with the following. Instead of making incisions in the cornea to weaken the cornea, causing a compensatory flattening, in lamellar refractive surgery, a piece, a lamellae, which is a section of the corneal curvature, was actually removed, reshaped, to a different curvature and then reapplied to the eye. This is a whole different concept. But if you, as you see when we talk about LASIK, this really is the predecessor of how we're doing LASIK. This is, this is the thought process beyond the changes in the curvature of the cornea that we affect with modern laser vision correction. Um, the first procedure that was done in this regard uh, was called myopic keratomyosis. And myopic keratomyosis is important to us LASIK surgeons because it it involved the development of this instrument called a microkeratome, which was the instrument that was used to make that little cut in the, in the surface of the cornea, which today we do with a special laser called the intralase laser, which we'll talk about in a minute. This microkeratome was applied to the eye. There was a suction device that applied it to the eye. A um, section then was removed with the blade, totally removed. Now we wanted to change the curvature of that section of the cornea, and the way this was done in this procedure was it was freeze-dried and recut to a different curvature on a, on a lathe, just like you would cut a contact lens and shape it on a lathe to a different curvature. This was done to human tissue. And then it was uh, recut and relathed and then reapplied to the eye and sutured back into place. And uh, this is what it looked like in the final analysis. So it was sutured back in place with sutures uh, and placed back on the eye. Now, obviously, this 
this operation was not done by a lot of American surgeons because it involved the, the acquisition and the, ex the expertise in this huge micro lathe. Uh, that was that had to be uh, installed in your office. So it really had a very limited uh, amount of availability, and it was very dependent upon the skill of the surgeon. But nonetheless, it, it really began the thinking towards this idea of using a section of the cornea and reshaping the section of the cornea rather than putting incisions in the cornea to weaken the cornea was a better idea to change the curvature of the cornea. So although this had a very limited application and the results weren't really great, um, it, it did begin our thinking towards how to arrive, as it were, at the modern LASIK operations. So this was followed by a second operation called automated lamellar keratoplasty, which is very similar in a way. So again, uh, in, this pr in this procedure, a, a section of the cornea was removed, and it was changed by removing another piece of cornea and discarding it. So instead of lathing the cornea, we would make two cuts take the thin part out and remove it and put the, th the thicker part back on the cornea. Uh, this again used an automated lamellar keratome. A section of the cornea was removed, but instead of freeze drying that and relathing it, we then went back and took another piece out. So, for example, we wanted to thin the cornea by so many microns, depending upon the degree of uh, the patient's nearsightedness, then we would take so many microns out of the curvature of the cornea. The original piece was then placed back on the eye and either sutured or not into place. And although, again, this operation was, and certainly by today's technology, would seem very crude, it was an important part of the development of laser vision correction. Results were fair, very limited studies. Once we developed this idea of making a hinge on the flap rather than taking the whole surface of the cornea off, it became a much uh, better operation. But at that time, it really did form the basis of the modern LASIK operation.